The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The Devil's Share. It is 6.45 p.m. October 26, 1939. Frank Whalen, a dirt farmer, is sitting down to a simple evening meal when the door to the kitchen opens and his brother, Jeff Whalen, comes in. Well, howdy, Jeff. Thought you was going to spend a couple of weeks up at Big D. So I changed my mind to come back. Any law against that? Didn't say there was. Yeah, just fix and eat. I'll get you plate. Stop playing big, brother. I won't eat. I can rustle my own grub. You can call that fat back and beans grub. What's the matter with you anyhow, Jeff? Nothing. Just leave me alone. You've been acting like this for quite a spell. Thought taking a trip would do you some good. Jeff, why'd you come back? I met Luther Riggs up in Big D. He told me you and Ma Jan was fixing to get married. Oh. So that's it. Why didn't you tell me? Because of the way you've been acting. I was going to tell you when you come back. You should have had a talk with me, Frank. Ma Jan used to be my girl, remember? Used to be, ain't now, Jeff. Maybe you should ask me a few things about Ma Jan. Maybe there's a couple of things you ought to know. Anything I want to know about Ma Jan, she'll tell me yourself. As far as you're concerned, ain't nothing to tell. No, huh? You ought to learn a little about women, Frank. You might learn a lot if you didn't spend so many days looking at the rear end of a mule... So many nights poking your nose into that Bible, Leo. If it's hurt me any, I reckon I'll find out when judgment comes. Meantime, I ain't taking your word for it. Meantime, you ain't bringing Marjan here either. Or maybe you're forgetting it. I'm half owner this far. You never prove it by anything you grew here. The law says I'm half owner with or without growing anything. You want to bring a wife here, you better buy me out. You can have my share for two thousand dollars and good riddance. Jeff, you got yourself a deal. I'll give you 800 cash in the morning and notes for the rest. You give me 2,000 cash in the morning. I ain't got that kind of money, and you know it. Who do you think you're kidding? You had a good crop. You got that much in the bank right now. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And almost half of it belongs to old Uncle Joe for working on shares. Work you wouldn't raise a hand to do. I don't care about you or Uncle Joe. Let him wait, not me. Jeff, get this. And get it straight. Uncle Joe is going to get every nickel that's coming to him whenever and however he wants it. He's worked for it. Okay, Frank. I just guess you, me, and Ma Jan going to live here like one big happy family. <laughs> Maybe Ma Jan like that more than you think. You... <laughs> Jeff, if you wasn't my brother... I'll get you money for you, somehow... I'll get it and you can clear out. I wouldn't have Ma Jan around dirt like you for a million dollars. Oh, she used to be mighty fond of dirt like me. Jeff, I... shut up, I tell you. Don't say nothing else, Jeff. Don't open your mouth. It's only remembering when we was kids together and the memory of Ma and Pa that's keeping me that's from beating you. That's too bad, Frank. Because I ain't like you. Memories don't bother me at all. You ain't going to do anything to me, Frank. And I'm going to get what I want, and I'm going to get it all now, including my jam. Jeff! Put that bread knife back on the table! I took a knife to you once before, Frank. Paul stopped me that time. But Paul ain't around anymore. Give me that knife, Jeff! Oh, take it, Ma! Oh. Oh. I 
But you sure was Paul was here this time. <laughs> Jeff Whalen waited until next morning before reporting the death of his brother Frank to the local sheriff. The sheriff asked for the assistance of a Texas ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned to the case. Well, Jace, I went all over the place earlier this morning when I was called here, and now you've been all over it. If you see anything, I must have missed it. Mm, Doesn't seem to be much to see except the body. Want to talk to the brother now? He's still waiting in the parlor. Yeah, I know. I'll see him in a minute. Look at the table where Frank Whalen was eating. I was cutting his bread from this whole loaf. Crumbs show that. And it was a sharp, clean cut. This eating knife's the only one on the table, though. That's not sharp enough to slice the bread that way. He might have cut the bread, then put the knife away. Mm, That's possible. But it doesn't figure. No, no, it doesn't. Fellow sits down to his food, he don't put nothing away until he's through. And Whalen wasn't through. From the looks of it, he just started to eat. What you looking in the drawers for? Murder weapon, maybe. Something like this bread knife? Could be, I guess, but that knife's clean. Yeah, too clean. Look at the blade and the handle. Well, what about them? The other knives in this drawer don't shine like this one. This one's got special treatment. Hey, I see what you're driving at. You figured it was rubbed with a scouring pad to remove blood, maybe, huh? That's something we'll have to find out, but it's worth a bet. It's been cleaned up too well to help us any, though. Eh, we might as well put it back in the drawer. Seems like that knife's the only thing we got to go on, Jace. And we're not even sure of that. I know. Yeah, we better have a talk with Whalen's brother right now. Sure, but Jeff won't be able to help much. Why not? He just got back from Dallas early this morning. Called me as soon as he found the body. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, we might as well see him anyhow. Marge Ann Galt's in the parlor with him, Jace. Oh, who's she? And Marge Ann and Frank Whalen was fixing to get married. Folks tried to keep her away when the news got out, but... She came anyhow. Yeah, it's just as well. She might know something. She's broke up pretty bad. Parlor's here. Sliding door. I'll open it. Jeff, the ranger'd like to talk to you and Marjan now. Why need not I see Frank? I want to see him now. I think it'd be better if you didn't, ma'am. For your own good, Marjan. Last night. Only last night I was home at I was sewing pillowcases. No, come on, please, Marge. Look, do you have to talk to her now? I can tell you anything you want to know. All right. But I think you'd better come into the next room then. Okay. Ma'am, why don't you just stretch out on that sofa and rest? All right, Jeff. When did you find your brother's body? Well, like I told the sheriff, by 5 o'clock this morning when I come home. He was killed last night around dinner time. Where were you then? On the road, I reckon. I've been up to Big D for the last five, six days. You drive back? Didn't have nothing to drive back in. I hitch rides. Come back, same way I went. And got here at 5 a.m.? When did you leave Dallas? Well, yesterday afternoon, I guess, about 2 o'clock. Why? Why are you asking me this? You're supposed to be finding out who killed Frank. Now, don't get steaming, Jeff. Ranger's got a reason for asking. You didn't touch anything in the house when you got in? Ranger, first thing I saw was my brother laying there on the kitchen floor. Then I hightailed back to the highway and called the sheriff. Waited right there till he come pick me up. Okay. Your brother been having trouble with anybody? You know of any reason why anybody might want to kill him? Well, no. Nothing I can think of. Except... Go ahead, Jeff. Well, it just something come to my mind, Sheriff, but... No, couldn't be him. Couldn't be who? Come on, Jeff. Your brother's laying dead in there. We got to know every little thing, no matter how small. Well, all right. Just before I left, Frank did have a little argument with Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe? Who's he? Old sharecropper. Been working a good piece of this farm for Frank. Mm. What was the argument between him and Frank? Well, old Joe claimed that Frank owed him some money from the crop. Frank said it didn't. They're both pretty hot about it. That don't sound like your brother Frank. Or Uncle Joe. I know it don't. It was probably just a misunderstanding. They straightened out. That's why I told you it wasn't worth mentioning. When it comes to murder, anything is worth mentioning. And this sounds like it might be plenty important. Sheriff, we'd better ask Uncle Joe to account for his movements last night. I haven't seen him around, but his granddaughter, Belle, might be able to tell us something. We've been standing around outside the house ever since we got here. Look, I'd like to go back to Marge, John. She needs somebody with her. All right, go ahead. And tell Belle to come in here, will you? 
All right. I'll send her right in. Oh, uh, just a second, Jeff. Yeah? You must be pretty tired. You have much trouble catching rides last night? Well, I got one long ride in a truck. Uh, you know who owned the truck or anything about the driver? Well, uh, no. No, I didn't talk to the driver much. I, I slept most of the time. I think it was out of state truck. Well, truckers usually don't like sleeping rider beside them on a night haul. Well, I, uh, th- this fellow let me sleep on a shelf uh, up in the back of the cab. Oh, I see. All right, send Bell in. Okay. You've been asking him a lot of funny questions. Yeah, and he's been giving me a lot of funny answers. What do you mean, Jase? That stuff about sleeping on the shelf in a truck cab. He never slept in that suit he's wearing. It's too well-pressed. So he changed clothes when he got home this morning. He said he ran to call you the minute he saw his brother. Yes, Bell. Come in. Bell, you and your grandfather, Uncle Joe, you live on this farm? Yes, sir. That little house down there near the meadow. You can see it. Just the two of you? Yes, sir. Where was your grandfather last night? He was home, sir. He don't never go no place. Was he home all night? Where was he at dinner time? Home, sir, honest. Only time he left was for a few minutes to prepare. He didn't leave the house at all. Hmm? Not in no time. He didn't leave the house at all. Bell, you're lying. No, Sheriff, no, I'm not. Look, Bell, you started to say something, then you backed away no, from sir, it. No, sir, I didn't. Bell, if you want to help us and your grandfather, you better talk up. I told you everything, honest, I did. With all this going on, why am Paul around? Why'd he run off? He didn't run off. He went to the church to pray for Mr. Frank. He loved Mr. Frank. He would never hurt him. Mr. Frank was good to us. Where's their church, Sheriff? Left fork of the road, this side of town, but he probably ran off someplace. We can find out about that later if he isn't at the church. Let's go. <laughs> Uncle Joe was at his church, all right. We saw him kneeling in the dim light when we opened the door. Sheriff beckoned to him and he came out into the sunlight. Tears were streaming down his face. I was just saying the prayers to Mr. Frank, Sheriff. I didn't know you'd be needing me for anything, sir. Where were you at dinner time last night, Uncle Joe? Why are you asking me that, Mr. Sheriff? Just answer the question, Uncle Joe. You you can't be figuring that I killed Mr. Frank, is you? We just want to know where you were. I never hurt Mr. Frank. He's the best man I ever knew. Why, he, he's even helping me so as I could buy my own strip of land and, and my own mule. Uncle Joe, I want an answer. And tell the truth. Bell already tried to lie for you. Begging your pardon, Mr. Sheriff, but don't nobody never have to lie for me, sir. The truth ain't never hurt me. I ain't never hurt the truth. Well, you'd better tell the truth. Just a minute, Sheriff. Uncle Joe, did you leave your house at supper time yesterday? Yes, sir, Mr. Ranger. I did. Where'd you go? To Mr. Frank's house, sir, like, like I did every evening, to bring him some of Bell's fresh bread for his supper. Uncle Joe, I better tell you right now that anything you say from here on can be used against you. Used against me for what, sir? Ain't nothing I'm ashamed to tell. How long did you stay there? Well, Mr. Frank was cooking him some food. I just stayed long enough to leave the bread and to fix up with him to meet him Friday at the bank so he could give me the money. What money? What was mine from working on shares? Are you saying Frank Whalen was holding money of yours? You had an argument about whether or not he owed you that money, didn't you? Mr. Frank and me ain't never had no argument, sir. He was my good friend. Hey, Jace, here comes one of my deputies, Ben Sloan. Yeah, I thought he and the other boys were beating around the farm. You know, they might have found something. Hmm. Howdy, Ben. Howdy, Sheriff. Now, what's that you got wrapped in that newspaper? This. What? How bloody nice. Where'd you get it? Reckon old Uncle Joe here could tell you as well as I can. We found it in the weeds, out behind his shack on Whalen's farm. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, The Devil's Share, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. Uncle 
Uncle Joe stared at the bloodstained knife the deputy had found behind his house. The stare was a look of recognition. You ever seen this knife before, Uncle Joe? Come on, answer me. You know we've seen it before, Sheriff. can tell just by looking at him. How about it, Uncle Joe? Yes, sir, Mr. Ranger. It's mine. It's just an old Whitland knife. But I never used that or nothing else on Mr. Frank. Uncle Joe, you're under arrest for the murder of Frank Whalen. Mr. Sheriff, I'm telling you here, outside of God's own house, I never done it. I think maybe you better deputize a few more men, Sheriff. We might need them. Why? What for? People around here thought mighty high of Frank Whalen, Jace. They aren't going to cotton to the idea of him being killed by somebody he took in and helped. And you can't blame him for that. I can blame anybody for anything that doesn't follow the law. You're not going to have any problem with Uncle Joe, Sheriff. I'm going to take him off your hands. Now, hold on, Jace. He's my prisoner, and I'll guarantee his safety. I know you'd protect him. That isn't why I'm taking him. I'll give you a receipt for him and bring him back here later. Where are you taking him? I'm going to radio for Unit 88, the ranger plane, to pick us up and fly us to Austin. And you'd better hand over that knife, Ben. That goes with me. I put through my call to Camp Mabry, Austin, and the ranger plane picked us up at the nearest airfield. Uncle Joe tightened up as we took off, and and his lips moved like he was praying. After that, he relaxed. Where are you taking me to, sir? Ranger camp and lab at Austin, Uncle Joe. You know what a lie detector is? No, sir. Well, it's a kind of a machine. It's called a polygraph. It can tell whether a man is lying or telling the truth. Now, whether or not you take the test is up to you. We can't force you. Look, I'm colored folks, sir. Would it work right on me? Yeah. It'll work all right, Uncle Joe. Well, if you say it's all right, Mr. Ranger, then I'll do it. I trust you, sir. You're good folks. Like Mr. Frank was. We landed at Camp Mabry. I dropped the bloodstained knife at the lab and then took Uncle Joe upstairs to the polygraph room. He wavered a little when we seated him in the chair and fixed the bands to measure his blood pressure, pulse, and respiration. Sir, this chair... This ain't no electric chair, is it? Ah, don't worry. It won't hurt you, Uncle Joe. We're ready to go, Jace. Okay. I'll be waiting in the next office. Now, no matter what I ask you, Uncle Joe, I want you to answer yes or no. That's all, understand? Yes, sir. Is your name Uncle Joe? Yes, sir. Is Belle your granddaughter? Yes, sir. Do you go to church? Yes, sir. I waited in the next office, knowing what was happening. The technician would go through the list of questions, the simple, harmless questions that would register truthful reaction on the graph. And then he'd start to hit the questions that mattered. The questions about Frank Frank Whalen. Yes, sir. Did you have an argument with him about money? No, sir. Did you use a knife on him? No, sir. Did you kill Frank Whalen? No, sir. Was the knife with the blood on it yours? Yes, sir. Do you know how the blood got on it? No, sir. Is that the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Uh, that's all, I guess. Now, you just stay put, Uncle Joe. I'll take those things off you in a minute. Yes. We're all finished, Jace. Good. What was the reaction? Looks like he's telling the truth, Jace, all the way down the line. Even about not having an argument with Frank Whalen over money? According to the graph, no argument. He wasn't lying. Good, because that means somebody else was lying. I'm going to take him back to... Him. Just a second, Jace. Kenny speaking. Yeah. I'll tell him. He'll be right down. And that was the lab on that knife you brought in. Yeah, they typed the blood? It isn't human blood, Jace. It's chicken blood. Unit 88 flew us back to the airfield where I'd left my car and horse trailer. The sheriff had been notified that we were returning and he met us at the jail with a couple of deputies. At my request, Uncle Joe agreed to spend the night in a cell for safekeeping. Then I filled the sheriff in on what I'd found out at Austin. 
chicken blood. I don't get it, Jace. Why didn't Uncle Joe say he'd use that knife to kill a hen? Because he didn't. That knife was planted where it was found. And whoever planted it didn't expect the investigation to go any further. Uncle Joe kept the knife in the shed behind his house. Killer got it during the night after the murder, stuck a hen with it, and tossed it in the weeds. Have to be somebody who knew the place pretty well to find that knife and do the plan. It was somebody who knew the place. Frank's brother, Jeff? Frank's brother, Jeff. What do you know about him? Have you ever been in any trouble? Not around here. Yeah, we better check and find out where he stayed in Dallas and who saw him while he was there. We don't know for sure he was there. Oh, he was there all right. How do you know? Because Luther Riggs saw him. Luther just drove back from Dallas this morning. I met him about an hour ago and he told me he'd seen Jeff there. How long was Riggs up in Dallas? Just overnight. Quick business trip. Why? And didn't it seem kind of funny that Jeff hitchhiked back here in such a hurry when he could have stayed over until this morning and gotten a sure ride with somebody he knew? Didn't think of that. Where does Riggs live? Farm, four mile out. Let's drive out there. I want to see him. Well, howdy, Sheriff. Come out to give me a hand with my milking? <laughs> no, thanks. Let go of that cow for a minute, Luther. I want you to meet Ranger Pearson. Uh, well, sure thing. Howdy. Howdy. The Sheriff tells me you met Jeff Whalen up in Dallas yesterday. Yeah, that's right. When? I reckon it was just about 9 o'clock a.m. I'd been driving most of the night to get there. Stopped for a red light, and there was Jeff just fixing to cross the street. You talked to him at all? Sure. Told him to hop in, and I'd take him wherever he was going. He said he was just drifting around, so we went and had some breakfast together. Did he tell you he was heading back for home? Not right off, he didn't. Sounded first like he was planning to spend quite a while in Big D. Didn't say nothing about coming home until... Well, uh, until after I told him that Mar Jan's folks had told me that Mar Jan and Frank was getting ready to set the date. You mean he didn't know his brother was going to get married? Didn't seem to. Hmm. Matter of fact, now that you mention it, he looked right upset when I brought it up. Maybe it was because of Frank not telling him. Or maybe it was because... Maybe it was what? Go ahead. I think I can answer that one, Jason. Hmm. Mar Jan and Jeff used to walk out together about a year ago... Then Marjan sort of broke off with him. Took up with Frank later. That's right, Ranger. But Jeff never looked like it bothered him none. The way a man looks doesn't have anything to do with what goes on inside of him. Thanks for your help, Riggs. Come on, Sheriff. You're welcome. Yeah, looks like we dug up a motive, Jace. Yeah, but we need evidence to go with it. Jeff left Dallas a lot earlier than he told us he did. Not much chance of digging up anybody who gave him a lift, I guess. I'd say no chance at all. There's something else we can look for, though. What's that? Remember my saying that his clothes didn't look like he'd slept in them or driven a long way in them? Yeah, I do. The only reason he'd have changed clothes would be because the things he'd been wearing might have gotten blood on him. Well, I'm not saying you're wrong, Jace, but we combed that house. There wasn't nothing there. No. But they'll be on the farm someplace. What makes you think so? Jeff couldn't risk being seen around any place last night. Any move he'd make would have to be on foot. He had no other way. So it's a good bet he stuck close by the farm until he called you this morning. I got my horse in the trailer. I'll pick up one for you and take another look around. Jace, we've been out here half the night. I don't think we're going to find anything. Maybe not. Come on back to my place and let's hit the sack. When we wake up, we can start out fresh. I don't want to wait too long. If we come here by daylight, Jeff will see us looking. Well, I'm beat. Can't we just go into the trees over yonder and rest a while? Yeah, I guess so. It'll be dawn in about two hours. We can move faster then with a little light. Good. Come on, boy, over at the tree. We'll all take a breather. Come on, Sharky. <laughs> moved into the trees, dismounted, and hobbled the horses. The sheriff dozed off quickly, and then I began to nod. But an hour later, I came out of it. There was a bright glow across the fields, beyond some corn stalks. And it wasn't the morning sun. I put my hand over the sheriff's mouth and shook him. Shh, shh. Hey, look over there. It looks like a fire. Yeah, just beyond the corn. Come on, quick and quiet. What do you think it is? Jeff Whalen, burning those clothes we've been looking for. We ran for 
the cornfield, and when we got into it, the light rustle of the morning wind and the stalks covered our approach. Came to the edge of the field and saw him, Jeff Whalen, dumping kerosene on a pile of smoldering cloth. Look, Jason. Those boards in that hole. An yeah, old well covered over. He dumped the clothes in there last night. Now he's come back to burn them. Must have been some water in the well. They're smoldering. They won't burn right. They will if he keeps pouring kerosene on them long enough. Let's get him. All right, Jeff. What? That's enough. Drop that can. Drop it, I said. Well, sure. Sure, I'll drop it. You want chase? He threw the can onto the fire, and a sheet of flame leaped up between us like a blinding flare. I dove across it, trying to clear my eyes. Look out, Case. He's got a knife. Oh, I was on him before I saw him. The blade flashed. I dug for my gun, but I couldn't bring it up in time. The knife slashed into my shoulder and went to the ground. He landed on top of me, but as he raised his hand to strike, I got my gun free with my left hand and slapped the barrel against the side of his head. You all right, Case? Yeah. I guess my... This shirt will need a little stitching, though. Think your shoulder will need a little stitching, too. Couldn't risk a shot. You were too close. Yeah, come on. Got to stamp that fire out before all the evidence is burned. Well, that's only kerosene on the ground burning. I kicked what we need out of the fire. Plenty left for your lab to work on. Uh, good thinking, Sheriff. Oh. Oh. Coming, too, Jace. Yeah. Uh. All right, Jeff. Come out of it. Uh. Come on. Uh. What'd you jump me for? Uh. I was only burning some old fire. Yeah, we know. The old things you happen to be wearing when you killed your brother. You were right about that bread knife, Jason. Look, here's what he used on you. Mm-hmm. Got nervous about that, too, didn't you, Jeff? Decided to get rid of everything and let old Uncle Joe ride for you. Oh, look, you're crazy. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah? I talk kind of a foreign language. But maybe the grand jury will understand me when they indict you for murdering your brother. Come on. Get on your feet. Move. Jeff Whalen was tried and convicted for the brutal knife murder of his brother, Frank. On August 2nd, 1940, at Huntsville Penitentiary, he died in the electric chair. This is Joel McRae wishing you all a very, very happy new year. Good night, folks. See you next week. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Saddle Tramp. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Tom McKee, Parley Bear, Peggy Weber, Roy Glenn, Wilms Herbert, and Rye Billsbury. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. NBC wishes you a season of good cheer. A brighter new tomorrow and a happier new year. Stay tuned for the $64 question. Tomorrow, remember the Cotton Bowl game on NBC.